Okay, so Ryan Tove, everyone. So far, all we have is girls. That's good. We got six girls. Wow. And an ABBA in the background. Okay. Tell me more who will come. Okay, yesterday we were so happy. We left, as you see in the picture, the Jewish people with lots of happiness. They sang the beautiful Shira, the Shiratayam, the song at the sea. They didn't want to leave. So Hashem had the Shekhinah move away. The holy presence of Hashem moved away. And the Jews, either they wanted to follow it or Moshe had to drag them. And they went into a desert. And you got to remember the name of that desert was called Midbar Shur. Shur, Shin Vavresh. Easy way to remember is just to ask yourself, are you sure you remember the name of the desert? Are you sure what the name is? You say, sure, I'm sure. It's named Desert Shore, the Shore Desert, okay? And sure to see. So like you're seeing the Shekhinah, so they followed Hashem into the desert and they traveled in the desert for three days. Now, a little prop, a big problem happened. What did the Jews not do during those three days that they were traveling? They forgot to learn Torah. They forgot to learn Torah for three days. And when you forget to learn Torah, Hashem, you know, you forget about Hashem. Hashem's not happy with you. So then Hashem gives you a test. Not a test with a pencil and paper, but a test if you will do the right thing. So what was the test? Well, remember when they left Egypt, they had jugs of water. It wasn't a lot. They've been in the desert already for 10 days. For 10 days. And for some miraculous reason, they didn't run out of water. Hashem made a nace. They just kept going to their canteen and there was water in it. But now after these three days, they saw that all the water in all their cups and things were all empty. And now when you're in a desert where it's really hot and there's millions of people there, millions, that's not good. You can't live very long in a desert without water. A day, two, not very long, and then you're going to die. So what happened was, so they, they for three days, there was no water. And then they come to this place called Moro. Oh, there's the sign right there. See the sign? Big sign. Mora. We'll see why it's called Mora in a minute. And they go, oh, great. There's water. There's tons of water. Look at, look at that water. Whoa. There's a lot of water. And they go running to the water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. They run over to the water and they put their hands in the water like this. They go, <laughs> it was bitter. It's like, it was like, did you ever, you know, you can try this once, just once, but don't ever do it again. Take a glass of water and put two big teaspoons of salt into the water. Marvelous. Just try it once, never again. And just try to drink a little. I wouldn't suggest you drink very much. Just try to drink it. You're going to go, ugh, that's terrible. You can't drink that kind of water. That's exactly what this water was all about. Terrible, salty water. They can't drink anything. They say, what kind of joke is this? We're thirsty. We need so much water. And now there's this great water, and it all is not drinkable. Now, this is really bad, but here's the problem. 
They saw it wasn't drinkable. So they complained. Now, who complained? You got to always remember, there were two groups of people who went into the desert. You have the Jewish people, the regular Jewish people, and then the Mitzrim, who wanted to go along with the Jews because it was the winning side. And they came along also. I see, Matana, you drank some salty water. I can see what's happening. Not a good plan, I told you. That's what the water tasted like. And when you're thirsty and you get salty water, it's even worse. It makes you more thirsty. So anyway, so now, so there was the regular Jews. And then we call the people the Erev Rav, the Egyptians who wanted to join and come along. The Erev Rav, now, if, if you're thirsty, let's say you're really thirsty, you go to your mother, and there's two ways to ask for the drink. You tell me which is the nicer way to ask and the not nicer way. Let's look at the first way. You go, Ima, could I trouble you for a minute? I'm kind of thirsty. Seems like all the water is so salty. Could you please find me some nice water? That's the first way. Second way is, What's going on over here? I'm thirsty. I'm really thirsty. And all I got is salty water over. What did you do? You brought me to a place where I only have salty water? So as we know, like Adina is pointing out, it's the first way is the better way. But the Erev Rav, those people who came along, they said it in a complaining way. And although the, you, the Jews were allowed to ask for water, I mean, they need water, but there's the way you ask for water is more important than asking. And you know why they spoke with such chutzpah? They spoke with such chutzpah because they weren't learning Torah for three days. Well, that's why it's so sad that you know the government's closing all the schools. And that we have to learn Torah over Zoom, which is not as easy. It's very hard if we don't learn Torah. It's so important to learn Torah. A day should never go by without you learning Torah. But the Jews went three days without learning Torah. Okay, so now Moshe, what are they, what are they gonna do? So Moshe cries out to Hashem. Hashem, what am I gonna do? They're all thirsty. thirsty. They're really thirsty so what am i gonna do so hashem tells him to do the following hashem says find a piece of wood or up from a tree that's a very very bitter bitter tree there's some trees if you take a bite out of the tree it tastes as bad as the salt water that matana was drinking he says take this very bitter tree and throw this bitter tree into the bitter water. And Moshe says, okay. Now I want to ask you a question. If you have a bitter tree and bitter water. It should be more bitter. What you're expecting to see is it should be more bitter. But Hashem did an amazing miracle. The amazing miracle was it turned sweet. It turns sweet, which teaches us a lesson. It's not the water that makes it drinkable. It's Hashem who makes it drinkable. And Hashem is trying to teach a lesson that sometimes when something looks so bad, and even if the person is so bad, it can maybe be something good at the end. Because Hashem can do anything. Sometimes we go in life and, you know, not that we drink bitter water, but sometimes something happens to us that feels bitter. And sometimes maybe Hashem wants you to do teshuva. And not everybody likes to do teshuva. And it's not easy to do tshuva. And doing tshuva sometimes is bitter. But sometimes when you mix the bitter with the bitter, it becomes sweet. And Hashem gave them instructions. They said, you know, they went three days without learning Torah. I gotta fix this up. Well, first of all, the water became sweet. All of a sudden, everybody goes running to the water. And they're drinking water, drinking water, drinking water. They're, they're doing good now. 
filling up their canteens. Everything's amazing. And then Hashem says, you know what? I'm going to teach you some Torah to teach to the Jewish people so that they'll have what to learn. So they won't go three days without learning Torah. Now, does anybody know what mitzvahs Hashem taught Moshe in this place called Mora? Ten mitzvahs. Whoa. Let's see. Ariella thinks she knows one. Is one of them Shabbos? Yes, one of them was Shabbos. You got it. One of them was Shabbos. Let's see if somebody can figure another one. Shabbos is one of the most important mitzvahs you can do. So that's why he taught them Shabbos. Well, I'll make it easy. Seven of them were the seven mitzvahs b'nei Noach. The seven Noachide mitzvahs, the ones from the times of Adam Rishon. That even a non-Jew, do you know non-Jews have seven mitzvahs they have to do? You can't kill, you can't steal, you can't marry somebody you're not allowed to marry, you can't curse out God, you can't worship idols, you can't eat the flesh of a living animal, and you have to set up courts. Those are the seven laws for a non-Jew. So Hashem repeated that for the Jews, taught him Shabbos, also taught him a very important mitzvah, kibbut of aim, listening to your father and mother. That was an important mitzvah. And finally, the various mishpatim laws that if you owe people money to pay them back, you know, people are fighting with each other. You owe me this money, I owe you that money. He taught them that. So he taught them 10 mitzvahs and now they're going to know lots of mitzvahs. So now they'll be able to learn Torah. And then Hashem, told them one last thing. He says, I'm telling you now and tell this to the Jewish people. If you listen to all these mitzvahs and you keep these mitzvahs, you will get the privilege of more mitzvahs. And if you do the things you're supposed to do, you'll listen to this. Hashem says, all the sicknesses and all the terrible things happen in Egypt. You'll never get sick. You'll never get sick if you follow all the mitzvahs of the Torah. And you know why? Because Hashem says, because I am your doctor. I know there's a lot of doctors in the world, but the real doctor is Hashem. And Hashem says, what's the best way to be healthy is to follow the Torah, do all the mitzvahs, especially honor your parents and keep Shabbos. These are the big ones. And you do that, you'll never get sick. You'll never have bitter water again. So now that you're in the desert, you have lots of Torah to learn. That is the story of Mora. And remember, the story of Mora teaches us very important. It's not the water that makes itself sweet. Hashem makes the water sweet. And when we do Averos, that makes everything bitter. When we do mitzvahs, it makes everything sweet. And that's what we have to learn. Now, now comes the exciting part. So later on in history, the rabbis said, you know what? This important thing, we should never go three days without Torah. So what if there's somebody who doesn't know how to learn Torah? You know, in the olden days, now you guys are very lucky. You have lots of books in your house. You have nice Jewish books that you could read and you could learn Torah. But long, 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 long ago, there was no such thing as books. No such thing as books. How could you learn Torah? But even long, long, long ago, there was a safer Torah. You know what a safer Torah is, a Torah scroll. So the rabbis say, you know what we're going to do? That we're going to make sure to read the Torah in shul so that never three days go by without people learning Torah. So now let's see if we're very smart. How many days are in a week? Anybody know how many days in a week? Okay, you're showing with your fingers. Seven, seven days in a week. How many times a week do you have to read the Torah so you don't go three days without Torah? 
Think about how many times do we have to take a Torah out in the shul? Chill. Let's just think for a minute. How many times do we have to read it so we don't go three days? Three. Three. I see some people with two fingers, some people with three fingers. We have an argument here. That's good. Some people say two, some people say three. Okay. Five. Well, no. The answer is we read the Torah three times a week. Three times a week. Does anybody know what days they are that we read the Torah three times a week? If you read it three times a week, you'll never have three days without Torah. Do you know what those three days are? Uh, who's got their hand up? Uh, Ariella. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is a really good guess. You got one out of the three days correct. Is it Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Sabbath? We'll see. Well, Let's Monday, see. Wednesday, and Sh one second. Monday, Thursday, people and Friday. People are and calling Shabbat. out. We have to have people raise their hands like Shira is raising her hand, and I will call on her. Shira, what are the days? Monday, Thursday, and Shabbos. Monday, Thursday, and Shabbos is correct. Let's see. Monday, you're reading the Torah Monday. So you have Tuesday and Wednesday. No Torah. But back, back on Thursday, you have Torah again. Then we got Friday and no Torah, and then Shabbos. That is correct, Shira. But now I'm going to ask a really good question. Let's see if you're really smart, guys. Why does it have to be? Now, I understand why it's Shabbos. You tell me, why is Shabbos one of the three days? Raise your hand if you could tell me. We have three days. Why was Shabbos picked as one of the days? Hillel, what do you think? You got to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Because it's a holy holiday. Because it's one of the holiest holidays in a week. Okay. <laughs> well, you're right. It's a day you don't got to work. It was one of the mitzvahs. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's a day you don't got to work. So you have lots of time to study Torah. We go to shul. No one has to go to work on Shabbos. And you read the Torah. Everybody learns Torah. That makes a lot of sense. Shabbos makes a lot of sense. But why does it have to be Monday and Thursday? Couldn't it be, let's say, Monday and Wednesday? Couldn't it be Monday and Wednesday? If I do Monday and Wednesday, I also don't have three days without Torah. Or maybe Tuesday and Thursday. Why is it Monday and Thursday? Now, that's a really hard question. And you got to be really smart to know that answer. And I see one of the Michalowicz kids, Akiva, I think. I only see a hand. I don't see a face. But anyway, what does Akiva because say? it's Bahab. Okay, you're talking about Bahab. What's, what's Bahab? That I'm not so sure. I forgot. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's see if somebody else can figure out. Why does it have to be Monday and Thursday? Okay, it's a hard question. I didn't expect you to know this. And now watch, I'm going to say goodbye to my hand. What? Who's raising their hand? I'm Ariella. Ariella? Okay, what do you say? Because, like, Monday's the first day of the week, so they want to start the week off with Torah. Monday's not the first day of the week. Sunday's the first day of the week. I know. Who, who put your hand up? Shira's got her hand up. What do you think, Shira? Because um, on Monday, he, Hashem created, he, he separated the sky and the waters, and on Thursday, he made the water creatures. Whoa, your mother must have told you that, eh? You got a smart mommy. Okay, let me, you got the right answer. You got the right answer. I bet you your mommy's behind the screen and is telling you that. But that's good. That's good. Your mommy remembers a lot of Torah, so that's good. Let me show everybody. I'm going to get rid of this nice picture for a minute. I'm going to give you another thing. Now, this is something you got to read, so you're going to be really smart here. Boom. Let's take a look. Can you? Oh, I didn't share it yet. I got to share it. Hang on. We're going to make it a little bigger. Whoa, okay. You know, Hashem created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh, right? Let's take a look. You got day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see that? 
I know a lot of people have trouble remembering what Hashem made on every day of the week. What Hashem made on the first day, the light. Hashem said, let there be light. You don't have to put your hands up. You can just look. Then Hashem on the second day separated the upper waters and the lower waters by making the rakia, the sky in between. That was the second day. The third day, the water and the land were separated. And now you saw the land and vegetables and grass was growing on the land. The fourth day, Hashem made the sun, the moon, and the stars. The fifth day, he made the birds and the fish. The sixth day, he made the animals and Adam and Chava. Seventh day, Hashem rested. How am I going to remember all that? How am I going to remember all that? You know, there's a trick. I'm going to tell you, not everybody knows the trick. If you ask most people, go to say to somebody, what does Hashem make on the fifth day? Person go out, let me think, fifth day, uh, let me see, you know, uh, was it the moon on the fifth day? No, it's the fourth day. What does that make on the third day? On the third day, uh, I think I made fish. No, he didn't make that. So there's a way to remember. Everything in the world is made out of, out of one of four things. Everything in the world is either fire, water, earth, and air. Can you think of something that it doesn't have fire, water, earth, and air? There's nothing in the world. You have to, we, we have all four. Everything either is, has fire, makes it hot. It's got liquid. Water is not only water. It could be juice. Earth is the ground and air. Every day, every day. So you know what Hashem did? Let's look over here. The Midrash says every day of the week had a, had a partner, had a partner. Now, how many days are in the week, guys? Seven. How many partners were there then? How many partners were there if you have seven days? 14. No, 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 no. There's only seven days. Every day had a partner. And the partner was another day of the week. I wasn't clear. Every day, there's seven days. Every day has it's a partner. Not- so how many partners were there? Yes, Akiva? Four. Four. That's a good guess, but there's a problem. There's only seven days. There's only seven three. days. So it should be three. Well, now, who are the partners? I'm going to tell you now. Which day was a partner with which day? There's a trick to know this. Some people say Sunday and Monday were partners, Tuesday and Wednesday were partners, Thursday and Friday were partners, and Shabbos had no partner. No, that's not the answer. The answer is, take a look right over here. Look over here. The first day, Hashem said, let there be light. That's fire. The second day, Hashem separated the higher waters and the lower waters. That's water. The third day, Hashem made the land come up in one place, that's earth. The fourth day, the sun and the moon, that's fire again. The fifth day, the fish and the birds, they come out of the water, that's water. And the sixth day, the animals and men come out of the earth. So look, look over here. We got, we got fire on the first day is partners with fire on the fourth day. Uh, Mordechai, don't make my... Don't make marks on the uh, screen. Akiva, don't make marks on the screen, please. Okay, can you put them away, please? Okay. Okay. The second day was a water day, and the fifth day was a water day. So they were partners. The third day was an earth day, and the sixth day was an earth day. So they're partners. So Sunday is a partner with Wednesday. Monday is a partner with Thursday. Tuesday is a partner with Thursday. And Shabbos had no partner. And Shabbos went to Hashem and said, I'm so sad I don't have a partner. So what did Hashem do to fix it up? Who knows? What did Hashem do to fix it up so the Shabbos day wouldn't be lonely? Yes, Tehila, what did Hashem do? That that the Nisra would be Shabbos' you. partner. Yes, yes. The Bnei Yisrael would be Hashem's partner. Okay, uh, Akiva, what did you want to say? I see your hands up. Oh, it went down. 
The same thing. The same thing. Okay, good. So each one was a partner. We're a partner with Shabbos. Now, what do we know about the Torah? What do we compare the Torah to? If, you, if you'd if you have to say, what would you use something in the world that's like the Torah? What would you say the Torah is like? The answer is, well, what Water. did you see? The Jews were in the desert. And what, that's right. If you don't have water, you die. We all know the famous story with Rabbi Akiva, which I don't have time to tell you right now. But the Torah is like water. When you are able to learn uh, Torah, that's like you're drinking water. Just like water is life, Torah is life. A Jew without Torah is like a fish out of water and we die. So Torah is water. So now, which days of the week should we read it? Should we read the Torah on a fire day? No. Should we read it on an earth day? No. What day should we read it on? A water day. And which is the water day? Monday and Thursday are the water days. And since those are the water days that give us life, that's why we read the Torah on Monday and Thursday. And Shabbos, we always want to read on Shabbos because we have lots of time to read it. So these are the seven days. And these, why we, Hashem said, you got to learn Torah three times a week, every three days. Okay, that was the message. Well, they didn't stay very long in Mara. They filled up, they learned a little Torah, and they went on to the next trip. But before we go on to the next trip, I'm going to show you tonight's volunteer work if you want to do it. Here it comes upon the screen that I have to share with you. And I'll send it out. Some, some people are doing their work every day, and I told you you can get a treat every day. Do you see my thing here? It says Torah Teasers. Do you it's see like, the sign? Torah half, Teasers. It's only half the page. Oh, yeah. You only see half the page. You should see the whole page. Never mind. Now we do. Now you do. Torah teasers. Now here is the answers. Let's go over the answers first. And you have to put in the Hebrew word in the line. You see this all empty line everywhere. An empty line, an empty line, an empty line. Forget about these lines on the bottom. Just one empty line. And we're going to put in the right words. Yashir means they sang. Shasa means to drink. Miriam, you know Miriam's name. H is a tree. Zahav is gold. Torah, you know what Torah is. And a midbar is a desert. And you know what Shabbos is. So those are easy. Those are really easy. Torah, Shabbos, Miriam, Mayim is water. Mar is bitter. And now we have to figure out how to do this. Let's, let's do the first one together. Raise your hand if you know the answer. They're really a poem. Moshe led the men in a voice loud and clear as they sang the words of Oz. Akiva? Yashir. Yashir. Amazing. You got the idea? Let's try one more. The women also sang about the yam and were separately led by hand. Okay, who's got it? Hill, hill out. Hand. Who? I didn't quite hear that. No, you're. <laughs> Miriam. Miriam. That's what okay, that's good. Bye, Miriam. Okay, we'll do one more. We have time for another kindness from Hashem up above. The Jews received more Kesef and good. Ariella. Ariella, we have to wait to be called on. Ariella. Good. Zahav. See, it reminds me above. See, there, there, they, they are things that rhyme. Zahav is gold. Kesef, silver, and gold. So above and Zahav. See how they rhyme. Okay, so that's your thing for today. If you want to fill this out, you could do that. Tomorrow, we're going to learn all about the mon. 
We're going to learn about that. But today we learned a lot all about what happened. Here's the picture here. Here's Mara. There's Moshe throwing in the bitter wood into the water. There's the thirsty Jews. And there's the super mitzvah boy. Okay, so all of you could be a super mitzvah boy or a super mitzvah girl. And we're going to stop the share. And we're going to stop the recording and wish a tzaraim tov to everybody. Hope you have a great day.